So I left my full-time job very quickly for this role. And so I did not have a business plan thought out. I didn't really know what I was like. I hadn't thought it through because I was like, this is an opportunity for me. I know this doesn't come across often, so I'm going to take a leap. Welcome to How to Build a Profitable Nutrition Business. If you love nutrition and you love helping people and you want to be in the game long enough to keep doing that, then this is the podcast for you. Let's get into it. Welcome to How to Build a Profitable Nutrition Business. Today, we've got an amazing guest called Alyssa Rumsey. Alyssa is a registered dietitian, nutrition therapist, and certified intuitive eating counselor. Alyssa is also the author of Unapologetic Eating, Make Peace with Food and Transform Your Life. Alyssa runs Rumsey Nutrition Consulting, a weight-inclusive practice that offers virtual consults, group trainings, and online programs. But none of that is why I got Alyssa on today. I come across Alyssa because she's one of the few dietitians out there that has an amazing course designed to help nutrition professionals grow their practice. Alyssa helps nutrition entrepreneurs grow their business or their dream. She's the founder of Dietitian Entrepreneur Foundation Core, an online program that teaches nutrition professionals how to set up and launch their nutrition business. Alyssa also runs The Liberated Clinician. This is a weight-inclusive group coaching program that combines business coaching and supervision, all done in community. What really shone through to me in this podcast is Alyssa's desire to truly help other nutrition professionals. She built products simply born out of the need to help other nutrition entrepreneurs. I hope you get as much out of this podcast as I do. Thanks. All right, so welcome back to How to Build a Profitable Nutrition Business. Today, we are really fortunate to have Alyssa Rumsey from New York City in the United States. Now, I I actually come across Alyssa because she is one of the few uh, people that have actually put together a course for nutrition professionals, and it looks fantastic. And so I reached out to Alyssa, and she kindly decided to come on our podcast. And she's got a fascinating journey that, uh, you know, I think will be really valuable to share with our audience. So how are you going? Alyssa. Hey, thank you so much. I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here with you. Now, time zone wise, where are you? Is it, uh, what are you, Monday afternoon? Uh, Monday evening, my Monday time. Evening. Oh, yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank you so much. We're, we're uh, in Australia and it's it's now Tuesday morning. So it's great to always coordinate these things. Now, now your journey, uh, you, you've been a dietitian for 15 years and for nine of them, you've been in private practice. Can you tell yeah. me, or in, in business, I should say, we call it private practice here in Australia. Tell me about that journey. So like, you know, where you started off and then where it led for you today. Sure. So I actually started off my career, well, kind of backing up to when I was doing my training to become a dietitian. My original plan was to work in the sports nutrition field. That's originally what I wanted to do, working with athletes. And then um, here in the US at the time, we had to do a year long internship after our undergraduate degree. And I ended up like totally surprised me. I fell in love with clinical nutrition care, specifically working in the intensive care unit. So I took a job. My first job as a dietitian was with a large medical center here in New York City, a big teaching hospital. And I thought I'd be there for maybe two years. And I was there for almost seven. Um, And they were great because, you know, I I started in clinical and worked in clinical on the inpatient side, but they had a career ladder. So I got experience, um, you know, doing a lot of other things, not just seeing patients. And so I got my start doing media work there. I got my start speaking and writing. Um, doing social media there. I also, um, you know, through them became a spokesperson for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics um, uh-huh. with the support of my manager. And that's what really turned me on to entrepreneurship. I never thought that I would be a business owner. I think I had like a small thought of an idea like way back when I was in my early 20s. But then you know, hadn't really thought about it um, until I started doing these other things through my clinical job and just seeing all the opportunities that were out there that I was really interested in. Oh, well, yeah, it, it, it can be a bit of a bug, can't it? Like once once you you start your own business, I, I've always said that I think I'd rather do 12 hours for myself than eight hours for someone else. Yeah, yeah. And it was, you know, I think too, I had started doing some different consulting and projects on the side. And I had started, I had realized like, okay, I've been here almost seven years. I'm ready for something else. I was getting a um, graduate degree in health communications. And so I was looking for full-time roles in that, like the kind of food communication space. And just sort of realized as I was applying that 
those jobs were going to be such a small fraction of what I enjoyed doing and what I wanted to do. And the idea of being able to do lots of these different things at the time was really attractive to me. And I sort of was like, okay, the only way I can do all of these different things is if I work for myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you, you bit the bullet and you went for it. What uh, what what were the early learnings? Or if you were to start again, what are the sort of things that you'd go back and change, do you think? Oh, my gosh. Well, what I will say is that, so for me, I was working full-time at the hospital. I was living in New York City, which is a very expensive place to live. Needless to say, I had not saved up a lot of money. I was single, living on my own. And so a big hurdle for me, before I even thought about you know, or before I even tried to leave was how am I going to pay for health insurance? And how am I going to do this when, you know, I had like some money coming in from the consulting work I was doing. Um, So I ended up actually taking, well, I had the opportunity that came in just really randomly through a colleague of mine that was a part-time job opportunity working in a corporate wellness setting, 20 hours a week, but full health insurance benefits with oh, which wow. any listeners are in the United States know that that's like a very rare thing here. Um, so I left my full-time job very quickly for this role. And so I did not have a business plan thought out. I didn't really know what I was like. I hadn't thought it through because I was like, this is an opportunity for me. I know this doesn't come across often. So I'm going to take a leap. So it was a very big learning curve because I didn't, you know, I work with a lot of um, entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs. And, you know, most people, I won't say all, but most people I think, and I think this is what works well for most people is you slowly build it on the side, right? And then you like kind of get to a point where you're like, okay, maybe I'm not fully ready, but I'm going to take the leap and go out on my own. And this for me, like I just like left because I had this opportunity. So I think there was a big learning curve just in the sense of, I mean, I had to bring money in fast. So I was yeah. doing like, I leaned on my network, which is something that I continue to do. And I'm so glad I did. Um, but I kind of skipped over a lot of what I consider now some of the like foundational work, some of like the grounding work around, you know, my why and vision and mission and values. And I kind of like jumped right in to taking on clients and contract jobs, partly because that was financial necessity at the time. It was um, sink or swim for you. You really had to just make it, was. it work, didn't you? Yeah. You know, I can, I can relate, to, I relate to that because we're, we were in a similar situation. So all, all of the things that you talk about, like mission and values, they all come later, which is crazy now looking back on it, isn't it? It is. It is. Because that's when I start working with folks that I'm like, this is where we're starting because this is the grounding. Yeah. And I also tell people too, right? Because for me, like it sounds similar to you it came later. And I think too, like my business has shifted several times over the last nine years. And I think these things can shift like as we change and as, you know, we have different experiences as humans. Um, So if you've started a business and you haven't done this yet, it's not like bad or wrong. And I think it is something that can be so, so just like grounding and this foundation of which to build on. So I did not do that. (laughs) And um, I think I I wish I would have because I I got around to it over the years. But um, yeah, I think I felt uh, not super grounded in who you know, what my business was and what I was offering for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, I completely relate to that. It's um, my, my why was feed my kids. Uh, <laughs> so I just needed to work. But it, it, like you say, it's kind of something like with the mission and, and the values you review regularly, because like you say, it shifts and changes. Um, so it's a great process to go through. It's um, But if you can, obviously just try and do it first. <laughs> yes. yes exactly. so, um, so, so you grew your business and so... I mean, you've you've clearly been successful at it, and you've been able to to stick at it now for nine years, which is you know better than a lot of people because you know a lot of private well, a lot of businesses don't sort of last more than five years. So, what are the things that you've been able to implement that have have been a bit of a success story for your business? You know, I mean, I think for me, a huge thing at the beginning, and now this continues, is just leaning on relationships and building relationships. And that was something that, you know, when I, so when I started my business, I'd been in the nutrition field for like eight years or something like that, seven years. And so I had built 
a lot of relationships. I was involved in our local dietetic association. I was involved at the state level, at the national level, um, working at a large teaching hospital. We had, you know, dozens of dietitians, lots of dietetic interns and students coming through. And so it was something that I was just, I was doing. And that was, you know, in my early years, that was how I got almost all of my work for my first couple of years. And I think, you know, it's gone through phases and I feel like it's kind of coming back for me full circle because for many years, search engine optimization is what has got me most of my clients. And now with like changes with AI and Google algorithm changes, um, I think it's, it's still important and I'm kind of coming back to these relationships are really are what is important too. And I'm always looking to refer people out and just being able to connect with people that are are doing different things that might support my clients. So I think that's one of the things of just, you know, having that network, like, and again, you know, networking sometimes has like a negative connotation, but I think of it as like building really authentic relationships yeah. with people and not just like, you know, one email, Hey, here's my info. If you want to refer anyone to me, but no, like building how you build any kind of relationship, friendship, partnership, like getting to know someone. And, um, and so that's something that I leaned on a lot at the beginning and, and certainly throughout my career too. And that I'm kind of coming back to and in having conversations with a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners over the last year, I think it again is just such an important thing. We're, we're such a personality profession, aren't we? Like I, you know, we, we had staff throughout our, when we owned our business. And one of the key things I was looking for is the ability for someone to be able to communicate effectively and, and there was outgoing. And that's where that relationship building comes from, which when you own your own business is then, you know, networking. Okay. So yes, like you say, that can have a negative term as if you're just trying to sort of use people. But um, it, it, like you say, it's, it's actually about relationships. And, and I think dietitians are pretty great at, at, you know, creating relationships because our effectiveness as clinicians depends on on how well we engage with our clients. And so that, that can work for business. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think there's so many parallels in the work, you know, because now mm. I still have a, a small private practice and then I work with other clinicians and nutrition professionals. And I, I say the words parallel process like multiple times a week, I think, because yeah, the, you know, the building relationships for our clients to help with their health and well-being. And then a lot of those, it's very transferable skills in terms of building relationships with other um, people who, you know, we can start to, to network and work with. Yeah. You know, I love that. And so something that is a passion of mine and hence while we're talking was that lack of business skills that you know, I mean, you can talk for for the United States, but certainly in Australia, we've got I think over fifty percent of our, our dietitians and or nutrition professionals in general um, that are going into private practice, to so going into business. Yet a lot of our training is very clinical focused, and, and you you know you would expect that, but there's there's very little in terms of actually helping someone survive as a business. And so, um, tell us about your journey, you know, with building the course and sort of where you landed in that space. Yeah. So when I started my business. Um, Um, As I said, big learning curve. I had zero business training. Um, And I I had mentioned before that I was a spokesperson for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics for a couple of years. And not all of them were entrepreneurs, but many of them were. And so I had at my disposal these like really amazing friendships and connections and people who could, who really like helped me get to that next level. And as I started talking with other dietitians, they were just kind of clueless. They're like, I don't have those people in my life. Like I have no idea where to start when it comes to starting a business. And so back in 2017, I started hosting in-person weekend long workshops in New York City for called the Dietitian Entrepreneur Mastermind Retreat. And I assumed that that was going to be people like in the New York State area. I had people flying from all over the country and even some international like coming to New York for this. And that blew my mind because for me, I was like, okay, yes, I think I have things to share, but also I wanted to get people in a room and really like talk things out and have time to, um, you know, really work on the business. I know for me, it's so easy to just get like in the day to day to day to day and not have time to step out and and big picture. 
And so that was my goal. And then I thought, whoa, this is really a hole that is not being filled right now. Um, And so that started in 2017. And so I ran, I think, 11 or 12 of those over about four years. I was doing four a year. And then the pandemic happened, um, which was actually, it was great because, so I had one booked for March of 2020. Um, Needless to say, we had to take it online and it worked so well, which I was not really sure. (laughs) It's like, I don't know about doing, you know, weekend long workshop online and it worked really well. Um, However, then I was kind of seeing, right, like, yeah, in March, people were very gung ho about being online. Within a few months, I don't know about you, I was feeling Zoom burnout. And so I thought like, okay, I don't want to run this just as an online workshop, but what can I do to put this information out there? So what I ended up doing was turning the parts of it that were for aspiring entrepreneurs into a self-paced course, which is the Dietitian Entrepreneur Foundation course. And my goal with that, it's all self-paced. And my goal with that was to, you know, I think nowadays, I think, It's very different from 2017 when literally I didn't know any business coaches. And now there are a lot or a lot more, let's say, in the nutrition space. And, you know, it it can be really expensive to hire a business coach. I wouldn't have been able to do that when I was first starting out. And so my goal has been to, you know, put the information into a format that people can consume at their own pace, that they can go back to, that's really action oriented, um, while also, you know, them not having to spend five to 10K to get their business off the ground. Um, because yeah, here in the US at least, like dietitians are still generally underpaid and really wanting yeah. to support the profession in that way. Oh, that's amazing. Um, Australia's the same, yeah. Like we're for the qualifications and experience that we have, we're an underpaid profession. Um, so yeah, that and like you say, the business coaches that they are expensive. You know, many worth every cent. I'm I'm, I'm certainly not detracting yeah. from that, but not everyone can afford it, particularly if you're a new graduate. So yeah, that's amazing to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And it's been, you know, again, it's been I take the feedback, and uh, so I created that in 2020, and then just revamped it in the fall of 2023. So now it's all new material. Like I re-recorded everything because you know, obviously the the business industry changes, um, and I was shifting and changing and kind of looking at business from a little bit of a different lens. And yeah. so, yeah, it is now completely updated, and yeah, it's something I'm right. really uh, proud of putting out there. So, so do you do still do in person at all now? Is it tempting to to go back to any of that? Just from I'm just uh, from a relationship perspective. Yeah, no, that is a great question, and I have a colleague who's like, "Let's do it in person." I really want to do it in person. Yeah. Um, you know, I think where I am just in life, it's I would love to at some point in the short term. I think it's going to be mostly online yeah. um, primarily because I don't know if you've run in-person events, but there it's so much planning and it's a lot of heavy lifting and yeah. just something I know I don't have the bandwidth like personally yeah. for right now. And gosh, like just the energy in the space, like I still remember it's been almost four. I mean, it's been over four years since I posted one in person and it was always just like I would leave, I would leave exhausted, but I would leave with like such a full heart of just being able oh, to, man. to connect and and have those in person connections. So never say never. Um, <laughs> I would love to bring it back at some point. And I do think that you know there are, are a lot of people, myself included, who are like wanting to get back to to in person connection. So I hope to yeah. at some point. No, I, I have run. Um sort of events and I, I do get the amount of energy required so I, I certainly understand where you're coming from um, and look I, I appreciate your time today I just want to quickly finish off with one sort of question that I'm going to make uh, you know part of the, the podcast regularly and it's if you've got uh, you're talking to someone who's just about to start their new business what's the three and and, a, and this is aside from doing your course that's a given they've got to do your course that, that just makes sense but what are, are three key p- bits of advice that you would give them before starting their business oh okay that's a great question um so number one I would say 
setting expectations around it is a slow, long process. It is for the vast majority of people, it is not like overnight, you're going to have all of these clients and all of these things. And I see a lot of folks, um, you know, sometimes go into it with that expectation, often because that's how business coaches sell and they sell making a certain amount of money per month, which is so not my ethos. Um, And that can be really hard. And then I find people have, you know, they're losing confidence because they're saying, well, it's not working. Like, what am I doing wrong? So I think having patience and giving yourself grace, like starting a business is a lot of work. And it is like, it took me several years before I felt like I was in a point where I was really more like stable and and consistent income. And and that's normal. I'll yeah. say like that's normal. Um which is sometimes hard because when you just look online at what people are saying, they're selling like the pros of entrepreneurship, which there's a lot, right? I still work for myself nine years down the road and it's really hard and it can be a slog. Um so I think like having patience, giving yourself grace is number one. So the second thing I would say is finding your people. I think having community and being in community with other people who are going through similar things, who get what you're going through and can offer support and honestly, just like listening, like I have, I have it like my tech chat friends where they're my friends, but they're like, we have just an ongoing every single day. There's text in our text chat. And honestly, a lot of it is venting and like, oh my gosh, this just happened. Like, and not even asking, sometimes asking for advice, but just having people that you can say things to that they can be like, oh my gosh, me too. That's happening to me too. Because that validation that you're not alone and that you're not in it alone. And just to have the support and those like ears is, is so, so important. And that's, I also run a six month group coaching program called the liberated clinician. And that's why I started that program because I think it can be really lonely to be an entrepreneur. And so how can you find places of community and people who, you know, can be a sounding board and, and can really be there to support you because there are a lot of, a lot of ups and there's also a lot of downs in entrepreneurship. Yeah. I, I love that. Look, I mean, you, you seem like such a, a genuine caring person and the products you've created aren't about the money they're about helping you nine years ago so I I love that and and because I I felt that isolation and I had the benefit of having my wife in my business which sort of helped me there was a bit more pressure because we had to earn enough for two wages but um, but that feeling of feeling isolated is is so real so I, I love everything you've just said yeah and then the third thing I would say is and this goes back to the conversation we were having of what I wish I did at the beginning of some more of the foundational work I think having a grounding in your values in how you want to show up and then making decisions, business decisions, and life decisions generally, like through that lens is so important because, you know, and this still happens to me nine years in, but certainly when I was starting out and different opportunities would come my way. And it can be hard when there's some like very real financial need or financial scarcity of like a gut check of, is this, is this a fit for me? And something that's been so, so helpful for me is just knowing my values, know what I'm committed to. And then when opportunities do come my way, using those as a lens through which to make the decisions through my business. And because there can be, there's a lot of hard decisions, right? That come in, in running a business. And so having that grounding has really helped me both in like making decisions, but also, um, you know, if I do get sort of like, negative feedback or constructive feedback. It helps me really know Fiona Sutherland has this, uh, I think it's a blog that she wrote about like troll versus teacher. And it helps me really have this grounding of like, okay, is this something like I can, I should take in and really learn from, or is this something that like, okay, nope, like this is not actually something that I do need to take in. Um, So it lets me be less reactive, less defensive when stuff does come up in that way, uh, just of having that grounding. Yeah, I love that. Like a decision-making framework for your inner voice. Um, yeah, I, I can relate to that one as well because, you you know, like it's, sometimes you, you, your negative voice can take over and you take everything on board and, you know, some things you just need to to let go and move on. So, yeah, that's that's great. 
three really key bits of advice that I think uh, any any person starting out or, or a veteran in nutrition business could benefit from. Thank right. you. Alyssa, so where can any of our listeners listening to this uh, get in touch with you or follow you or learn more about your course um, or the Liberated Dietitian? Like, hey, hey, what's the what's the best way for people to, to get in touch? Yeah, so my website is alyssarumsey.com. And then if you want to learn more about the Entrepreneur Foundation course, that's that self-paced course, that's alyssarumsey.com backslash foundation course. And then the Liberated Clinician is also a program I run twice a year. So that's a live program. Um, and that's alyssarumsey.com backslash uh, TLC. I also have, and I can send you these links for the show notes, but I also have a lot of uh, free downloads too for folks who are uh, either starting a business or are um, have already been running a business, things like a financial forecasting worksheet, an ideal client worksheet. And so you can also find those at alyssarumsey.com backslash RD resources. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll be sure to put all of those links in the show notes. Uh, Alyssa, thank you so much for coming on. This has been absolute gold. So um, certainly, certainly a lot of information that our listeners will benefit from. Thanks for your time. Of course. Thanks so much for having me. Do you find this podcast valuable? There may be other nutrition professionals out there will also. If you like, share and subscribe, it's going to help other nutrition professionals make an impact on the world just like you. Thanks.